Now, when we look at comma rules, sometimes it can be hard to tell exactly what the rules mean or how the rules apply unless we look at some examples of how to use those rules. So that's what we want to do now. to show where are some of the places you do use commas and where are some of the places you don't. Now, if we look at our comma rules, we see, for example, uh, we use commas when we're connecting complete sentences using the fanboys. So I might have Wally is rich, comma, and he is cute. If we look at this one, we can tell we have a subject and a complete verb over here. We have a subject and a complete verb over here. Since we have complete sentences, the fanboy by itself is not strong enough to connect complete sentences, so we do use the comma to help it out. On the other hand, if we don't have complete sentences, if I just say Wally is rich and cute, we look at this one and we see that here cute is not <coughs> excuse me, a complete sentence. And so therefore, we don't need the comma to help the fanboy. So that's something if you are tempted to use a comma, check and see do you have complete sentences both sides? And if not, you probably don't need the comma. Uh, another place you use the comma is in a series of three or more items. So if I talk about Wally still. Um, even if those items aren't complete sentences, we separate them with commas. Wally is rich, comma, cute, comma, and single. And at this point, somebody usually asks me for his phone number. So now if we look at this, we have a series of three or more items here. These are adjectives describing Wally. And so one way to think about these commas in this list is see if those commas can be replaced by the word and. I can say Wally is rich and cute and single. So you can think of the comma as replacing those ands. Which then gets you to this question, what's this one here doing? Because we already have the and. And the answer to that is depending on what grammar book you're using, this comma may be optional. It's called the Oxford comma. And in some grammar books, uh, you absolutely have to use this comma all the time. Probably most grammar books uh, that are used in academic environments say you should use the Oxford comma. But there are some other grammar books that say this comma is optional, uh, especially if the items in your list are short. Uh, you do still want to use the comma, though, if the items in your list are long and complicated, because that comma then becomes functional, tells you where an item ends. And, uh, for example, the Associated Press is one that says this comma is optional. Part of the reason for that is that the Associated Press is aimed at uh, news media. And if you're printing a newspaper, you want to save ink. It's very hard, especially in today's climate, for newspapers to make money. So they want to cut costs as much as possible. And so to save ink, they say, Leave the comma out unless you really need it for clarity. And then I get people asking, well, <laughs> how much ink do you use in a single comma? And the answer to that is, if you're the Albuquerque Journal and you're printing up 400,000 copies on Sundays and 250,000 the rest of the week, that adds up to a lot of ink. So the Associated Press saves ink. So what you want to do in whatever courses you're taking is look at whichever grammar book that your instructor is using or it, uh, expects you to use, and see whether your grammar book says you do or don't have to use the Oxford comma. So go by you know, what the situation is. Another situation where you do use commas is setting off an introductory element. This is especially true if you have a really long and complicated introductory element. For instance, after eating seven bean burritos and drinking four beers, comma, 
Wally didn't feel so good. So what we have here is a really long introductory element. In fact, this introductory element is twice as long as the main body of the sentence. And so what you have here is this comma lets the reader know, OK, I'm done with this introductory stuff. Now we're finally getting to the main body of the sentence. So after eating seven bean burritos and drinking four beers, comma, ah, here's the real sentence. Wally didn't feel so good. Um, another place that you use commas is setting off extra information, which means it's information that does not change the meaning of the sentence if you take it away. So I might have, I like Wally's dog, comma, which is well behaved. So what we have here is extra information. Um, if we take this part out, if we take out the which is well behaved, it still says, I like Wally's dog. So the meaning of the sentence hasn't changed. This other information is just simply telling a little bit more about Wally's dog. In fact, it's giving a reason why I probably do like the dog, uh, because she is well behaved. Um, on the other hand, if you have essential information, you don't want to put a comma in, because then you change the meaning of the situation. So I can say, I don't like dogs that bark all night. This is essential information. If I take out this dependent clause, if I take out that bark all night, I end up with, I don't like dogs, which is not true. We already know I like Wally's dog. In fact, I like most of the dogs that I meet, but I dislike the ones that bark all night. And so therefore, if we were to put a comma in this sentence, it would totally change the meaning. 